welcome to Around the Dog World. Today you join us at the beautiful crew hall for one of the sport's most prestigious competitions. By the end of today, we will have crowned the Dog World Pro Plan Pup of the Year winner for 2013. On today's programme, we have loads to fit in. The main event, the Pup of the Year final, and a look back at the first big winners in 2014 at Boston and Manchester Championship shows. Plus, we drop in at the Kennel Club to find out a little bit about the world's biggest dog show, Crufts. Come back and watch next month's Around the Dog World for coverage of the big event. Now let's get back to the start of the year where we look at Boston Championship Show. We were there with our cameras and we were filming Margaret Wildman judging her first best in show at this level. Let's see who she chose. Congratulations to Oliver, the Wire Fox Terrier, champion Travella Striking Steel, his ninth All Breeds Best in Show win. Today, though, we are joined by Andrew Brace, and Andrew Oliver is taking no prisoners, is he? It seems that way. Uh, he had a very good year last year, where he ran Ricky the Poodle right to the wire, and he started this year off in fine style with that best in show. And the reserve best in show winner was a bull mastiff. Yeah, yeah. This is a dog called Old Manila's Whiskey Mac for Optimus. The dog's bred in Norway, but interestingly, his sire is a dog that comes from the Leathernecks Kennel in the USA. This is a very, very famous kennel in the States. So this is possibly one to look out for for the future. Well, uh, a week later, we went to Manchester where Oliver took out another terrier group, 
he went back in for Best in Show and he was picked Best in Show winner for the 10th time under another Terrier specialist, Stuart Plain. Oliver is gaining some huge momentum, really. Mm. He certainly started the year off well, hasn't he? And I don't show dogs anymore, but if I was showing ter Terriers at the moment, I think I'd be a little bit concerned. <laughs> and Reserve was a winner we've seen before. Yeah, this is the little smooth coat chihuahua. Um, champion Sundowner, play Misty for me at the Cheetahs. Um, a real saucy little dog. A lot of people like this dog. So um, I think he's, he's, he's a big contender for a best in show somewhere. Now there is a lot of talk before Crufts that Oliver the Wire Fox and the standard poodle Ricky are going to be big contenders at Crufts. But it's not that simple, is it, Andrew? Uh, look, Marina, I, I, I really do hate all this pre Crufts speculation. The simple truth is that last year we saw two outstandingly good dogs battling for Dog of the Year. But what's happened in the past, certain dogs get tipped and it really can be the kiss of death because we've all seen group judges go into the middle of the ring at Crufts and put down the favourite purely to be different. Mm. And that's not judging dogs. Mm. The best dog should win regardless of whether or not it's won hugely or whether it's, it's just a, a complete unknown. Well, fair enough, Andrew. That told me. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Andrew. We'll see you a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. But now let's take a look back at Crufts. Simon went to find out a little bit more about the history of the world's biggest dog show. Welcome to the Kennel Club and we're here with Louisa Foster who looks after all of the stuff in the Kennel Club gallery and we're going to talk about the history of the greatest dog show on the planet, Crufts. Now take us back to the 1800s, um, how exactly did Crufts come about? Well Charles Cruft um, originally worked for Sprats, so selling dog biscuits and he was invited to France to um, put on a dog show in Paris okay. and it went really well um, <laughs> and so he decided he needed to do something like that back in London. Wow. So he started up his first show in 1886 in London. Um, it was just for terriers though, right. so it didn't start with, with Aubrey. So he just started his show just for terriers and ran that for a few years. And then in 1891 he started running the show for all breeds. And um, so some people would say that's the, that's the first sort of crafts. all breeds crafts, wow. yes. We've got here the catalogue for the for the first four breeds show, all breeds, wow. plenty of advertisements, and then obviously all the lists of the dogs that were shown at the time. Fantastic. 1891, the first mm -hmm. all breeds show, but mm -hmm. it was actually quite a long time until we saw our first Best in Show winner. That's right, yes. Best in Show wasn't awarded until 1928, and the um, first dog to win that was Primary Scepter, with a grey, which was a greyhound. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the first winner of the, of the big, big award that everyone knows today, really. And in recent years, we've seen a, a lot of dogs that have, that have won crafts sort of end their career there. That's the, the big finale, but that isn't the case in years gone by, is it? No, no, not necessarily. Um, there were a number of dogs that won more than once, actually. And the HS Lloyd is probably very well known for winning crafts with three of his dogs, Cocker wow. Spaniels. And um, each of the dogs won twice. Um, and then there was another dog as well, um, a Labrador Retriever, that also won twice. So, I, I, can, yeah. I can see him sitting yeah, in front of you Yeah, we have there. a photograph <laughs> of him here, um, Champion Bramshaw Bob, and this is a photograph of him, yeah, and he is a very, very well-known Labrador Retriever, and he won Crufts in the 1930s. And after Charles Crufts' death, the show came under the control of the Kennel Club? That's right, yes. Um, the Kennel Club ran the first Crufts show in 1948, and ever since then the Kennel Club has run the show. And not only that, Crafts is not just a, a dog show anymore, it's become a, a sort of celebration of everything canine. Definitely, yeah. There's all kinds of events going on. There's an obedience, agility, fly ball, and obviously there's hundreds of trade stands as well, so anybody that owns a dog and wants to come and buy a few presents with their dog can come along and do a bit of shopping. And you've got some memorabilia here from Crafts through the years, haven't you? Yes. Um, I start off with this, this drawing here that's in front of me. This is quite interesting. It's quite early, and it just shows some dogs that were exhibited at Crufts in 1893. And the interesting thing is that some of these dogs here were actually royal dogs. So in particular, this little Pomeranian here at the front belonged to Queen Victoria. Wow. This is, um, I think it's a white Lapland dog. I'm not quite sure what it would equate to today, but that belonged to the Prince of Wales. And then he had his um, Labrador Retriever there, Juno, which he also showed at Crofts that year. Wow. And we've got a, a bit of silverware in front of us yes, as well. Yes, <laughs> this is just typical of the kind of um, souvenirs that Charles Croft had made to give out to people. It may not have been awarded for anything specific, this is from 1900, this jug, and you can see it's got the Crufts mm -hmm. symbol there, Crufts yeah. Dog Show emblem there. And these are what everyone comes to Crufts to get their hands on. 
That's right, well, we've got two of the Crofts trophies here. Obviously this one, this is the Kedal Memorial Trophy, which is the best in show trophy at Crofts. And it was made in 1925. Um, Charles Croft actually named it in memory of the show manager at the time, Robert Kedal. And it was made before the um, Best in Show award was introduced. So previous to that, it was awarded as a Best of Breed trophy. Right. which would have been a really impressive trophy to win for Best of Breed. <laughs> and it was rotated around different breeds each year. <laughs> so the first lucky breed to get it was um, the German Shepherd Dog. Wow. And then obviously when the Best in Show Award was introduced then, it became Best More in Show Trophy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one on this side, we, we've got the, uh, the Terrier Group Trophy. That's right, it's one of the group trophies. There are seven in total. And they have quite an interesting history. They were, were given to the Kennel Club originally um, by a man called Alden Stewart. And he gave five trophies to start with, and they were given at the Kennel Club show. So once the Kennel Club took over Crofts, then they were, they were then awarded for group trophies right. at Crofts. So Gordon Stewart gave the trophies to the Kennel Club in 1930, and he was a Great Dane man. He had a very large kennel of Great Danes um, called Send Manor, and that is why these vases are called the Send Gold Vases. Right. And as you can see on the sides of the trophy, there's two Great Dane heads, and that would signify his breed, obviously. Um, he had about 300 Great Danes. Wow. And then each of the trophies has um, a dog that corresponds to the relevant group. So as you see, we've got a little terrier on that one, and then each of the others has a relevant, I say, relevant breed. Well, thank you very much. No problem, thank you. Um, and see you in March. Yeah, see you there. <laughs> Great, thanks. And after the break, we head to the main event, Pup of the Year Final 2013. competitors today they'll do an individual lap of honor so into the ring the qualifier from boston the rough poly champion brooklyn son bruce willis and from manchester the labrador retriever whistletine magnolia tree from this scottish breed another rough poly brooklyn son fifth avenue we have the english toy terrier one word whitstone at the national terrier it is the dandy demon champion inzibar sparkling silver from Welks, welcome the pointer, Kainix Garfunkel. And the reserve from Birmingham National, Smooth Griffon, champion Don Theatre Royal Gen. From SKC in May, another pointer, Coralwood, Kainix Mr. T. Qualifier at back with the Pomeranian Velvet Dunmore, New Love from Rothstella. From Southern Counties, the first of our miniature schnauzers, Erzme swings the mood. At the three counties show, it's a German sorted pointer. Indie Jazz, truly scrumptious. From Border Union, the West Highland White Terrier, Lindenka Fraser. Black Bull saw the winner in the Tibetan Terrier, Kaibo Cookie Monster. From Windsor, it was a Whippet who took the top spot, Shellfleet, Simply Royal. Qualifying at the Easter England show was the miniature schnauzer, Wellingly Wild Wizard. From the National Working and Pastoral Breeds, the Great Dane, Selmalda, Angel of Parliament. Qualifying at Leeds was a commentator's nightmare. It's the Borzoi, Teshnigov, Kalinov at Stabili. From Hound Show, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendian, Soul Trader, Noble Kinsman. At the National Gun Dog, the winner was the Hungarian Whitehead Vizsla, Ragnall's Fantastic Mr. Fox, Tetragus. And from Paynton, the Norfolk Terrier, Jaiva Cuffling. Qualifier at Bournemouth was the Akita Champion Redwich, Will I Am. Welsh Kennel Club, the miniature poodle, Miss Shandy, striking midnight. Qualifier at the August Scottish Kennel Club show was the Laza Apso, Chic Schwa, Roof of the World. From City of Birmingham, the Dalmatian, Portunes, Green Day. The Richmond qualifier was the German shorthead pointer, Taftazini, Will She Win Two? And from Darlington, the Frenchie, Pringham Maestro. The qualifier at Griffin was the miniature smooth Daxon, champion Carpaccio Redder. And from Belfast, the third of our mini schnauzers, this one, New Jack's Johnny Cash. At South Wales, the winner was the Wirefox Terrier, Travella Step Forward. 
From Midland Counties, we have the Bulldog, Rogals Sir Arthur. From the British Utility Breeds, the winner is the Dalmatian, Offerdale Amethyst. And the last of our 32 finalists, from LKA, the Great Danes of Fathers <laughs> Against All Odds of My Dane. And now to introduce our judge. What a host of talent we have in one person here today, and I'm sure you all agree it's a ve very fitting tribute to have as our judge today for the final of the Dog World Purina Pro Plan, Pup of the Year, Claire Coxell. Now, as is usual at these, this competition, ladies and gentlemen, the dogs come, will come in with a batch of three. Claire, now going over the winner from Boston last year. <laughs> Champion Brooklyn son Bruce Willis, winner of three CCs and one, one of two in the litter to qualify for this competition. Champion Brooklyn son Bruce Willis. Next up. From Manchester, Derek Smith sent forward the Labrador Retriever. This is Whistletine Magnolia Tree and is just 12 months old. By Rewari Enterprise to Whistletine, out of Whistletine Missile Thrush. Owned and bred by Judith Keating. The second rough collie here is Brooklyn Sun Fifth Avenue. It's Steve Barrett who's handling his Homebred Bitch by Brooklyn Sun James Bond out of Brooklyn Sun Joanna. She's a winner of two CCs so far. A great breeding achievement to get two qualifiers in one litter, so congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Barrett. Now, Brenda Branbury awarded the UK Toy Dog Heat to a Pekingese, Yaki All Done and Dusted, who can't be with us today. So we have our reserve. This one, the English Toy Terrier, one word, Witchstone. Henry's 18 months old now and was the top English Toy Terrier puppy dog in 2013. This is the fourth Pup of the Year finalist for the Witchstone Kennel. The winner from National Terrier is now being looked at on the table. She is the Dandy Dinmont champion Inzivar Sparkling Silver. Won three CCs in quick succession and has not been shown since her winning her title. She is a daughter of the influential sire in the breed, champion Visca Vincent. Now from Welks, Terry Nethercott sent forward the first of our pointer qualifiers. Nearly 21 months old now, this is Koenig's Garfunkel. Arthur's by show champion Kiswahali Martin at Koenig's, out of Koenig's Aster. And at Welks, where Arthur qualified, was not only his first show, but the first stakes class his owner had ever entered as well. The winner at um, Birmingham National is unable to be here. But we've got a very worthy reserve here in the Griffin Bruxellois, champion Donziata Royal Gem. She is the third homebred qualifier for the Donziata Kennel. All smooths. Graham Hill judged the SKC heat in May. Sent forward 15-month-old pointer, Coralwood Canix Mr. T, who was imported from the USA. This pointer is by show champion Kiswahali Martin at Canix again. Out of American champion, Coralwood Yellowleaf Fall Classic. Now on the table we have the Pomeranian Velvet D'Amour New Love from Rostella, which qualified under Lynn Salt at Bath. She's by the international champion Damascus Road, Henry by the Sea, out of Bulgarian champion Baby Dolls, Badass. <laughs> Owner Robert Niven Lewis is handler here. Mary Dietz judged the heat at Southern Counties and sent forward the first of our three miniature schnauzers today. This one, Ersme Swings the Mood, who has a junior warrant and a show certificate of merit. He took the reserve CC at Richmond Show and qualified for both his junior warrant and show certificate of merit at just 15 months old. At the Three Counties Show, the first of our um, German shorthead pointers qualified under Liz Cartledge. It's the bitch Indie Jazz, truly scrumptious. Qualified at her third attempt, she'd won 
her heat on the other two attempts and took it overall at three counties. On the table now, the West Highland White Terrier, Lindenka Fraser, one through at Border Union under Jane Lilly. Fraser's owned and bred by Marie Perchon. Best puppy in show winner at the Westie Club Championship show. And best puppy in breed at Southern Counties, Border Union, East of England, and Driffield. Our judge now looking at the Blackpool qualifier, the Tibetan Terrier, Kaibo Cookie Monster. I'm told she's a real escape artist, and we see her liveliness on the table there. On the table now, the Whippet, Shell Fleet Simply Royal, 15 months old, sent forwards from Windsor by Andreas Schemmel. Pasha's sire was top hound for 2013. And Pasha took best puppy at SKC Three Counties and Leeds last year. A feat in Whippets who always have enormous entries. The East of England qualifier is on the table now. Another miniature schnauzer, Wellingly Wild Wizard. The owner is Jan Boyle from Pontypract in West Yorkshire. This dog's by Starbound Spellbinder out of Acacia Lead the Way. The judge at the East of England was Peter Clifton. Balfoss judged the heat at National Working and Pastoral Breed. She sent forward this Great Dane, Selmalda, Angel of Harlem. By the international multi-champion Europower Boy Toy, out of Selmalda in the name of love. 14 months old now, it sounds like Harlem's a bit of a hoolie at home. Seven best puppy in breed and best puppy in show awards, including working puppy group fours at both Darlington and Belfast. Winning at Leeds under Robin Newhouse was the Borzoi, imported from Germany. This is Schernikoff, Kalnikoff at Stubby Lee the winner of two challenge certificates so far. At Hound Show, it was the Petit Basset Griffon Vendian puppy that triumphed under Jenny Dove, 19 months old now. This is sole trader, noble kinsman. He has two CCs now, one at Darlington and Driffield, where he was also best of breed. National Gun Dog saw Jenny Miller sorting out the puppies. Her choice was the Hungarian wirehead Vizsler Ragnos Fantastic Mr. Fox to Tragus. The Tragus kennel has been successful in the past. Mr. Fox is the first Hungarian wirehead Vizsla to qualify for the final of this competition. On the table now, the Norfolk Terrier, Jaeva Cufflink. This youngster was sent forward by Frank White from the Paint and Heat. Won the Reserve CC at Midland Counties Norfolk Terrier Association. And the CC at East of England 2013. And really wants to play with Adakita. Hmm. Our judge now looking at the Bournemouth qualifier, the Akita champion Redwich Will I Am. Will is owned by Jenny Killerly and Arlene Clue. Will is already the winner of seven challenge certificates. On the table now from Welsh Kennel Club under Tom Mather, the miniature poodle triumphed over all Mishandi striking midnight. Lenin, 17 months old, bred and owned by Jackie Kitchener. He was reserved best in show and best puppy in show at the International Poodle Club Championship show on his debut at just six months old. Come back after the break to see the rest of our finalists and take a look at the history of the Pup of the Year competition. If uh, the new chairman were sat in the audience tonight, yes. what would you ask him? 
to care. I see myself as the judge that was banned. Scottish Kennel Club show, the Laza Apso, Shikshwa Roof of the World. There's Carlson, the Scottish Kennel Club August show winner. A combination of Finnish and American bloodlines. Jean Lanning judged at City of Birmingham and sent forward this Dalmatian from her heat, 15 months old, Portune's Green Day. Billy was best puppy in show at the British Dalmatian Club Championship show and also won best puppy dog at the Dalmatian Club of Scotland, North of England Dalmatian Club Championship show and the British Club Championship show. The Richmond qualifier was our second German shorthead pointer, Tuff Tazzini, Will She Win Too? Very successful in puppy stakes throughout the year, finally qualifying under David Guy at Richmond. She's a daughter of the show champion Cavacan Toff at the top and home bred by Julie. On the table now, the French bulldog, Pringham Maestro, sent forwards from Darlington by Patsy Hollings, owned by Mark Stewart, bred by Mr. and Mrs. Harding. At Griffield, Paul Harding was the judge, and his choice for the winner was the miniature smooth-haired Dachshund champion Carpaccio Redder. Winner of three CCs, all with best of breed. On the table now, the miniature schnauzer New Jack's Johnny Cash by American champion repetitions Rockefeller out of New Jack's Casino, bred by Jackson and Amy Manser. <laughs> this youngster has four green stars, all with best of breed, since a debut in August. At South Wales, it was the Wire Fox Terrier, Travella Step Forward, She's only been to one show, and that was South Wales, where she won not only the, the stakes final, but also best puppy in show. So a double success at her first show. <clears throat> the Travella Kennel, Bill is second generation breeder of the Travella wires. Since 1946, they've produced over 50 UK champions. Sent forward from Midland Counties by Peter Jolly, we have a 16-month-old bulldog, Robles Sir Arthur. And Hugo is his owner's first bulldog and indeed first show dog. So an achievement indeed to have qualified for this final. Our second Dalmatian finalist is Offerdale Amethyst, who won the heat at the British Utility Breeds under Anne Arch. Not yet a year old, Nelly won the CC at Manchester this year, so a good start to the year. Best puppy in show at the Dalmatian Breed Club Open Show. Now to the last of our finalists sent forward by Sheila Jakeman from LKA, the Great Dane, the fathers against all odds of my Dane. Tia's just over a year old now and has been a consistent winner with Best Puppy at open shows and at championship shows as well. Now, before we watch the final stages of this year's competition, we should find out a little more about today's event. We spoke to someone who has been involved with the finals since the very start, Patricia Sutton. Welcome, Pat. Thank you very much for talking to us. Um, now, you've been involved with the competition right from the very beginning, but just tell us how Pup of the Year came about. 
Well, mother was always very forward thinking, as I'm sure um, you know everybody will remember, and in innovative, that's the right word. And I think that um, over the years, she always felt that puppies should be shown off. And this idea came to her and she took it to Stanley Dangerfield, who was a great family friend, and he managed to get the Daily Express to sponsor it. And that's the beginning of the Pup of the Year. And so you mentioned um, mother there. Um... Well, um, my mother, uh, Catherine Sutton, and my father, who was known as Beefy Sutton, were uh, two, she certainly was a top all-round judge and a top beagle breeder for many years. Um, she judged Best in Show at Crafts and so did my father. And they were secretary and show manager, chairman of Richmond Championship Show and Windsor Championship Show. So two of the top general championship shows of their day. Um, so they were great leaders in the dog world. Now, the method of judging for the first few years is actually not as we see it today, is it? <coughs> no, well, because the paper had sponsored it, of course, they wanted to be involved in the judging. So the first year or two, it was judged by the paper's readers. Uh, the pictures of the, uh, I think it was 12 finalists, were posted in the paper, and then the readers all wrote or rang in or whatever, and uh, voted for the dog they liked best. Um, and a few years later, there was another judging change as well, but again, not to the system that we see today. No, they, they then began to get celebrity judges in. And the whole idea then was that, uh, that their final marks were on personality and effervescence and showmanship and all those sort of things. So it was very differently managed in those days. And then it moved on. And, and there were sort of <laughs> top all-rounder judges that came in and, and picked their winners. And it, it was a real um, top of the tree award to be giving out. So, and it, even even the um, the qualifier competitions now, you know, everybody likes to be asked to judge those. It's it's a feather in the cap. But then after the first few years under sponsorship of the Daily Express, um, Farrell uh, Summerfield heard they were about to drop out and quickly took the reins with Dog World, who she was working for at the time, as the competition's sponsor. Absolutely, and of course they were tremendous because they supported it on paper. Um, and they then, I think, went into sponsorship with Spillers. And of course Purina took over from Spillers as an arm of Spillers. And it's gone from strength to strength. And I think it's still one of the very major competitions that um, you know, we hold up our puppies against the best in the world. And so why do you think the competition is so successful? Um, we do see top breeders and handlers and exhibitors coming back every year and even to compete in, you know, the, uh, the, the semi-final, the heats. Well, um, I think Mother had the right idea in that she felt that every breeder worth anything wanted to breed the next champion. And the top breeders like to get out there and qualify a puppy and come to the finals. It's a lovely, lovely day. But I think it's it's a benchmark of your own breed. And do you think that your mother would have been very proud of these events today? Oh, I think so, yes. I mean, I think the fact that it's gone on for so long is a great testament to it being a good competition. Well, thank you very much, Pat, for joining us. It's been so interesting hearing a little bit of background about it. My pleasure. <laughs> now, let's head back to the main ring where we're going to see Claire Coxall picking her choices in the final judging of the Pup of the Year. First cut coming now, it's the number one, the Rough Collie. The West Highland White. The Whippet and the Tibetan Terrier from Blackpool. The Buba Dalmatian, Offerdale. The Bulldog and the Trevella Wire. The miniature smooth Dachshund and the miniature poodle and the Akita comes forward. The Norfolk Terrier and the Petit Basset. And thank you to the rest. We have Mrs. Coxall's first cut. There is the first cut going back to the palings before we see some more movement, I think, from our finalists. 
So now we're going to see them move again, beginning with the rough collie from Boston, champion Brooklyn son Bruce Willis. Marie Pershing with her West Highland White Terrier, Lidenka Fraser. And from Blackpool, the Tibetan Terrier, Kaibo Cookie Monster. There, the Travella Wire. Step forward, handled by Andrew as usual. Paul Scanlon with the Belfast qualifier, you Jacks, Mr. Cash. From Booba, the Dalmatian, Offerdale Amethyst. The Bulldog from Midland Counties, Robol Sir Arthur. The miniature smooth Daxon from Driffield, champion Carbaccio Red Adair. The Mashandi Poodle. Jackie Kitchener. Redwich Will I Am, the Bournemouth qualifier with Dave Killerley. The Petit Basset Griffon Bonnier from Hound Show, Soul Trader, Noble Kinsman. And finally, the Norfolk Terrier. Jaiva Puffley. Come back after the break to find out who Claire crowns Pup of the Year 2013. Out comes the Tibetan Terrier, the Wire Fox Terrier, the Miniature Schnauzer, the Bulldog, the Miniature Poodle, the Akita, and the Petit Basset, and the Norfolk Terrier. So thank you to the first cut. We're getting some, some running order now, I think, for our final eight. Round they go. The eight finalists for Pup of the Year 2013. Third cut comes forward. The Akita, the Miniature Poodle, the Wire Fox Terrier and the Norfolk Terrier. So congratulations to the others. And round they go, the Akita. The Miniature Poodle. Wire Fox Terrier. And the Little Norfolk Terrier are four finalists for this year's Pup of the Year competition. I think uh, judges coming to her decision. Boards might be called for now. Our judge is going to pull out eventually the winner followed by the reserve or oh, just picking two without any sense of who's winning what the f final two then from Claire's judging can I have four awards <laughs> four beautiful puppies I'll do it I'll do it going round <laughs> so off you go lady and gentlemen our four finalists, who will it be? The Akita and the Wirefox Terrier are our final two. Congratulations to the Miniature Poodle and the Norfolk Terrier. Our final two, the, the Akita, the Redwich Akita and Travella Wire. So it's the Wire Fox Terrier. 
It's a case of step forward, step, step forward. The Trevelovich wins the Pro Plan Purina Dog World Pup of the Year final for 2013 for, for Jeffrey Davis and Mrs. Brown Cole. And in reserve, we have the Akita champion Redwich Will I Am for Dave and Jenny Killerly and Arlene Pure. Ladies and gentlemen, 2013's Pup of the Year, the Wire Fox Terrier Bitch, Travella, step forward. Richard Allen handling. And in reserve, the Akita champion Redwich Will I Am. So here is your winner for 2013 at Pup of the Year. It's the Wire Fox Terrier, Audrey. Now, Richard, you were handling today. We've seen and spoken to you so many times <laughs> in the last year, but that was an incredible win at a big event, wasn't it? Yeah, it was amazing, really. It's, uh, she's only been to one show, so we came here hoping that she'd perform well, which she did, and uh, just come to enjoy the day, really. Yeah, that's incredible. Only one show. That just shows that she's got some fantastic natural ring presence. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, you know, you see a good dog at home, but they've got to turn it on in the ring, because if they don't, you're not going to win. Were you a little bit nervous about that this morning, then? Uh, a little bit apprehensive, but I got her out first thing and brought her into the ring, and uh, she seemed OK, so... I was, I was quite confident. Well, obviously, we've seen you with uh, Oliver as well, who was runner-up top dog last year, another wire fox. Are they actually related? Yeah, they're related uh, distantly, I think. She's a great niece or something like that, but they're definitely related. So when you woke up this morning and you thought, right, OK, I'm off to the Pup of the Year event today, did you really have any idea that you could actually top the lot? Uh, no, you're always hoping to win, obviously. It's a competition. I knew the judge would do exactly what she thought. Uh, so I was just hoping that she'd perform well and uh, kept her fingers crossed. So where will, where does Audrey go from here? Is she coming out more this year? Yeah, she can't go to Cross because uh, one of the owners is judging, but she'll be out at uh, National Terrier and then on from there. Well, best of luck with the rest of the year. She certainly started it very well. Congratulations and well done, Audrey. Thanks very much. Judge of Pup of the Year 2013 was Claire Coxall. That was quite a final, wasn't it? Oh, it was a little bit awesome. I got out there and I went through them and I pulled shortlist, the big shortlist. Then I did another shortlist and it got, didn't get any easier. And then it was down to the handlers. The dogs had equal quality, mm. they really did. The Norfolk Terrier, he hopped and skipped, I saw it. One mistake, and you're not looking for a mistake, but you've got to divide them. And there was the Akita and there was the Fox. When I asked that last one round, they put pressure on their dogs. And he asked that dog to give a bit extra, and it gave it. And those two dogs that have only just started their career, they can go on to great oh, success. Come on, where are they going to stop? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, anybody in the utility group is going to have to get some good ones out. But the miniature poodle, I must say, was exceptional. Hmm. That was sheer quality. It was a fantastic final, but you've also had the honour of judging best in show at Crafts. What was it like to get the call from another massive competition in the sport that oh, you were I, judging? I, I couldn't believe it because I'm, I'm stopping judging in 2016 officially at Bath. I'm out. And, and when it came, um, you know, you think, well, that's the second biggest one to Crafts that I've had. And you come here and, and those puppies are your future. And what a, a show to be given. Everything is designed for the future, isn't it, here? And I think it's one of the most prestigious. And the hotel, dear, I'll sleep in that bed any night. <laughs> <laughs> my father, my grandfather was in Scotties. I learnt my terriers. But I went into this silly coated breed called a poodle. <laughs> right? <laughs> and forgot my terrier background. And because you finished with two terriers and a poodle in the last oh, no, four? Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Claire. Runner-up Pup of the Year 2013 here at Crew Hall Hotel was the Akita Redwich Will I Am. Now, Dave Killerly, you were actually handling in there. I mean, how does that sound, being runner-up with Will? Yeah, in, in that kind of competition, it was fantastic. He's had a great year last year, started with the group this year, and now reserve here. But when you look at the competition today, if you're in the first cut, you've had a good day. If in the second cut, today was fantastic to get down to those last two. That's hard work. Yeah, and he, he moved incredible in here as well, in a, small in a small ring. You know, how hard were you having to work with him? Well, not difficult. I just had him on a short lead alongside me, whereas normally I'd show off and let him go out on a longer lead. 
today it's not got the room and you can't do the tricks. Uh, and what's uh, going to happen in 2014 with Will then? Are we going to see more of him? Well, I'm judging a lot this year, but we'll see him where, where we can get him out, we'll get him out. Well, many congratulations and enjoy the party afterwards. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. It's all over for another year. So, Andrew, we obviously spoke to you earlier. Now, tell us your reaction of that overall final. Obviously, when you get to an event like this, particularly with the Pup of the Year, the, the quality is always high. You've got a lot of dogs in there that are already champions, despite the fact that they're very young. But when you get to something like this, so much depends on the dog on the day and, and who performs. You know, she ended up with, the, she got the last four, okay? She's got the Norfolk, she's got the Miniature Poodle, she's got the, the New Wire um, and the Akita. So you've got four dogs there who are potentially, we're going to be talking a lot about those four dogs throughout the year, I would imagine, on Around the Dog World. So who pulls out all the stops? Who's the dog that comes up to Claire and says, okay, do not walk past me? Obviously it was the Wire. And she, it was clearly a really close call. Yeah. She made four cuts, eventually got down to those last four and, and said out loud she wanted to give out four awards. Mm. Such special dogs such mm. standing in front of her. Yeah, sure. And, you know, Claire's, Claire's done best in show her crafts. She's judged all the major events, so she's used to handling something like this and she gets on with it. But it's a unique event. It's not your usual typical dog show, so a lot of these dogs had to get used to quite a different atmosphere. Yeah, and obviously there's a huge parameter in ages with these dogs. You know, some of them will have qualified when they're close to 12 months, so therefore they're like two years old now. Some of them could have qualified very recently as babies. So, you know, you can have something like 18 months difference in ages between a lot of the dogs in the ring today. So obviously some of them are more experienced than others. And also with that, you know, huge parameter of age, if they're starting into their junior stage, a lot of breeds tend to go through quite a, a sort of a leggy, a different mature yeah, stage. They, well, they're like uh, humans. They go, they go through a gawky teenage stage. Yeah. You know, like he's going through at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we're talking coats as well. You know, there's no doubt about it that it's, the... It's the luck of the draw. It is. It's, it's January. Some dogs will be in better coat than others. You know, it, it depends very much on, you know, performance and form. Well, thank you very much, Andrew. Wonderful to see you today and wonderful to see all those beautiful puppies. The top winner was the Traveller Step Forward, Audrey the Wire Fox Terrier. Thank you very much for watching. Come back and watch Around the Dog World next month when we have coverage from the biggest dog show in the world, Crufts 2014.